For the record, my name is Tanya Fernandez Anderson, the District 7 City Councilor. I am the chair of Boston City Council Ways Committee on Ways and Means. This hearing is being recorded. It is being live streamed on boston.gov forward slash city dash council dash TV and broadcast on Xfinity Channel 8, RCN Channel 82, and Files Channel 964. The council's budget review process will encompass a series of public hearings beginning in April and running through June. We strongly encourage residents to take a moment to engage in this process by giving testimony for the record. You can do this in several ways. Uh, you can either attend one of our hearings and give public testimony. We will take public testimony at each departmental hearing and also at two hearings dedicated to public testimony. The full hearing schedule is on our website at boston.gov forward slash council dash budget. Our scheduled hearings dedicated to public testimony are tonight, April 26th at 6 p.m. and June 2nd at 6 p.m. You can give testimony in person here in the chamber or virtually via Zoom. For in-person testimony, please come to the chamber and sign up on the sheet near the entrance. For virtual testimony, you can sign up using our online form on our council budget review website or by emailing the committee at ccc.wm at boston.gov. When you are called to testify, please state your name, affiliation, and or residence, and limit your comments to three minutes to ensure that all comments and concerns can be heard. Email your written testimony to the committee at ccc.wm at boston.gov. Submit a two minute video or testimony through the form on our website. For more information on the city council budget process and how to testify, please visit the city council's budget website at boston.gov forward slash council dash budget. Um, today's hearings um, were on, uh, well today's hearing is on um, docket 0480 through 0482, orders for the FY23 operating budget including annual appropriations for department appropriations for the school department and for the post employment benefits, OPEB, docket 0483, orders for capital fund transfer appropriations, docket 0484 to 04. Eight six orders for the capital budget, including loan orders and lease purchase agreements. Um, our focus area for this hearing will be public testimony. Um, I am joined today by my colleagues, Councillor Aaron Murphy at large, Councillor Ruthie Lujen at large, Councillor Ed, uh, Councillor President Ed Flynn, District Two. Okay. Well, before um, I open the floor to public testimony, I would like to give my um, colleagues the opportunity to share an open remark. Um, I can either go around or if you uh, light up your microphone so that I can call on you to have um, for your opening statement. Councillor Murphy, you have the floor. Sure, thank you. Um, Thank you, Chair, and just happy to be here to hear the public testimony and understand the questions that people have. And I hope people zoom in and ask some questions so we have more information going forward with the hearings we'll have continuing with the BPS staff. And thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Council Murphy. Councilor Lujan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Really um, happy to be here for this evening's hearing. Um, we're discussing the budget and for many of um, you know, us new counselors, it's the first time that we're really engaging in this process from this seat. Um, and this work really is about bringing the work to the people. Uh, and that means bringing the budget to the people and making sure that people have a, a say um, in what we are spending our money on and making sure that the budget reflects what we value. So happy to be here, happy to hear public testimony tonight and the other, um, and the other moments and the other opportunities that the public has to really, really lean in and participate in this democratic process. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Lujan, Councilor Flynn. Thank you, Madam Chair, and just want to echo what my colleagues mentioned, honored to be here and listen to the public about the important role 
the public plays during the budget process. The budget is a reflection of our values, so it's important that the public weigh in and tell us what's important to them. So I also want to say thank you to you, Madam Chair, for the important work that you're doing and working closely with the rural administration on trying to be on trying to bring a budget that's um, that's fair and equitable. And just want to say thank you for the important leadership that you're providing. Thank you. Thank you, Council Flynn. Um, so I, I, I guess I just wanted to make some remarks about um, where we are in the amendment process, and I know that the public may have some questions about this. Um, I, I felt that although there are, there's an opportunity during the hearings for public testimony, um, it really restricted or uh, prevented people that have a hold a full-time nine to five job to attend and wanted to provide this opportunity um, after work hours for public testimony. And I hope that uh, folks can join us in the next one as well um, on June 2nd. Um, as far as the amendment, I think that we, we need to engage as a, as a council to be able to engage the community and really um, empowering our community and understanding what this process is going to look like. And as Chair of Ways and Means, we're holding a workshop on the 27th, um, actually um, this Thursday um, at 6 p.m. So if for those of you who is looking for information, uh, you can email me at tanya.anderson um, at boston.gov for the flyer information or any of the social media platforms. Um, and looking forward to that workshop as well as conversations about understanding the amendment and the budget process for this budget season. Um, and now we will now go to uh, public testimony. And first we have signed up is Lisa Beatman. Did I say that right? Are we ready for? Oh. Ms. Beatman, if you could hear us, I guess, bear with us while we get our technology going. Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, thank you, thank you all for convening this and for allowing um, the public uh, to give testimony. Um, my name is Lisa Beatman and I'm a co-leader of the Mount Hope Canterbury Neighborhood Association in Eastern Rosenville and also part of the American Legion Corridor Coalition. And I did send in some testimony, um, not for the first time, <laughs> regarding um, the need to allocate funding for multimodal transportation improvements um, along American Legion, and particularly at the, the Octopus, the five-way intersection uh, with Cummins Highway and Canterbury Street. Um, there have been, and we appreciate uh, some uh, multimodal improvements on um, sections of American Legion and Commons. I think uh, there's more and more understanding and agreement about the need for safe connectivity um, and the need for safer conditions for pedestrians and cyclists. And um, and that this section that I'm referring to continues to be very very dangerous. The city has not yet committed to allocating funding for planning and fixing it. So, um, so that is my my main request. Um, 
There's a lot of families. There's um, some people think that American Legion is a highway, which it's not. It's just misnamed. It's actually a neighborhood road with many thousands of residents um, that live in pocket neighborhoods all along it. And I had this <laughs> realization several years ago that we, many of us, we don't know each other or we barely know each other because conditions have been so unsafe for so many years that we don't walk. We don't, many people don't even take, go to the bus stop. I know I have a lot of elderly neighbors who, who, who <laughs> they don't want to go out um, because of those conditions. And um, so this is an equity issue. Um, and this is a neighborhood. I know that um, our particular neighborhood is 74% um, people of color and low to moderate income. And uh, so I'm again standing before you asking for uh, funding uh, to fix this particular section and truly connect um, the, these, these, trans, these corridors, these transportation corridors and make them work for everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Beatman. I look forward to connecting with you. I did receive your email. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, next we have Louisa Harris. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, I guess you can hear me. Um, yes, we can hear you. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Um, so thank you so much for this opportunity to um, participate uh, to, you know, improve um, our community. So I am um, representing some of my neighbors and um, um, other people. Um, and this is about the Boston Center for Youth and Families handing it, uh, in Jamaica Plain. Uh, we have been reaching out to the city for probably the past 10 years and um, asking to uh, attend to the facility uh, with very little results. Um, now it's probably three or four years that we have been more vocal about it, um, which unfortunately turned out to be a, a shutdown of the facility. So, but um, the point of our request is to bring to the, uh, bring to everybody's attention uh, this uh, facility that, if improved, could, could yield a tangible benefit for both. The neighborhood and um, and the city. So, just for everybody's um, uh, information, um, the facility is in Jamaica Plain, close to Brookline and bordering Mission Hill. It's dedicated, was dedicated, let's say probably better, uh, to encouraging sports, physical activities for all teens, families, um, and so forth. Um, as you may know, uh, this area of Jamaica Plain has been growing quite a bit. Um, you know, young families and professionals are moving in, um, kind of rebalancing what used to be more of a student populated areas um, of years back. Uh, and or other facilities that were more institutions. So uh, it's definitely growing as a community. The purpose of the testimony is really to bring to your attention the fact that uh, this facility, it's actual, the, 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 the location, it's a jewel in a sense, because um, it can really cater to so many people. Um, but because of the rundown conditions, um, it's just people used to come maybe once and then 
never come again because it was really uh, in bad shape and, and not well kept. And I mean, just say it that much. Um, when in fact, it could be a very modern and welcoming facility that the neighbors would actually use, would want to use it. I had worked with Councillor O'Malley to rebuild the stairs that go from uh, Mission Hill Hayden Street to Heath Street. And uh, it was uh, a great improvement to the neighborhood. Everybody's using it now as a passageway and as a uh, exercising <laughs> as well. Um, but um, I started working with Councillor O'Malley and then things change, of course. I'm working with my Kel right now, but I think it's really important that um, it is known to everybody that this is a um, outstanding facility that could be really be uh, transformed um, for the well-being um, of, of the residents. And um, I, um, I think you know our main request is, is this facility be revitalized. I know the, the school also use it, um, but uh, again, it's, it's very um, limited um, in, in the way it could be used. Um, I'm not sure what else to say. Uh, we look forward to, to just put some attention to this uh, facility. Um, here in Mission Hill, on the other side, there is a Tobin Community Center, which is outstanding. And so I'm not sure if it's just um, a, a, a problem with the management of the facility or just a complete disregard from the Boston Center and Youth and Family or the city uh, about this facility. Any questions? I don't know. <laughs> Thank you um, so much. Can you state your name for the uh, for the record again? Louisa Harris. Okay. Thank you, Louisa, for your testimony. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Good night. Uh, next, we have Samuel Pierce. Oh, he's not here. Um, okay, so if uh, Samuel is not no longer with us um, or on Zoom, um, we can, um, unless we, unless uh, any of my colleagues have any um, remarks, I, we can move on or go into recess and give it a few minutes to see if anyone signs up to testify. And uh, if not, um, I don't know, how long, how long should we, how long should, I, should we give it? Five minutes? We'll go into a five minutes recess and um, allow people to sign on. We're now back in session. Uh, seeing no additional public testimony, I will turn to my colleagues for closing remarks. Um, if you have any, please light your microphone so I can call on you. All right, um, so we'll continue to make these efforts to engage the community and I think that um, 
uh, we, I'm open to any feedback if folks want to email me in terms of um, reaching um, others, if, in case you are watching this uh, not on real time and um, you would like to engage in how you can, we can do this um, in a more um, engaging way. Uh, please, uh, again, you can feel free to email me, tanya.anderson at boston.gov. Meeting adjourned.